So the the final thing we're going to do, the uh, thing I forgot to do at least, is we would need to put something in the in-game menu. So you'd put all of your HUD stuff in here, basically, but we're just going to put some in-game text for now, just so we know we've got the correct menu up and running. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've got to run it now, play game, it loads the level up, we're in the in-game menu for the HUD, we lose, click the lose button, that's okay, go back to play game, loads up again, win button, yep. Yeah, that seems to be working okay. So the final part is that we need to fix up the um, fix up the quit button on the main menu so it actually quits. Uh, is there a quit game? There is. Quit preference. Quit. Specific player. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Will it even compile? Yes, it will. Save that. So let's run it. Can we quit? Yes. Play game. Lose. Quit game. So that's it, really. Um, you should have the menu floor there now. I mean, there are a few things you could probably do to, to clean things up. Um, in our main menu, Oh, I added this one here. Basically, again, when we get an event destroyed, I did add a remove from parent just to make sure it absolutely was removed. Um, but it's probably not needed because it should be removed when it gets destroyed along with the actor. But um, so let's just go over the the main blueprints so you can see them properly so we've got a main menu map we've got five different menus to UIs to display we've got the game enum which has the one two three four five six different enumeration states We've got the in-game menu actor, which on event begin play creates a sequence. Let's just zoom in. Creates a sequence and that sequence creates an in-game menu and sets it in that variable here. Then it creates a win menu. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong in-game menu actor. That's not the one we want, is it? Well, actually, let's keep going. Um, so the in-game menu actor creates the in-game menu, creates a win menu, creates a lose menu, and saves those in the three user widget type variables there. It then calls a an event on the game instance class, the custom game instance class that we created, and sets itself to in-game. So basically, when this actor is in a level it should set the state of the game to in game uh, which will then call um oh actually that's something that's a little bit wrong wrong isn't it that we need to actually oh no it is after that mm -hmm. yes um it's a bit sort of misleading because this pins here but actually what's happening is After we've created those three menus, we get the game instance and we bind to the state change event. In fact, I might just rearrange this a little bit. Move that way around, like this. So we bind to a state change event. We unbind. Let's just move those two over there. And then, and then 
we do this. So in order, create the widgets, bind to the state change event. We then call set state on the in game instance to in game, which will cause this state change event to be fired. And then we handle which menu to actually show. Just move that over there a little bit so we can see more of it. Um, we can say, okay, so the first part of the sequence is we want to un, un basically disable the menu that we're coming from and then enable the menu we're going to. So basically remove the last one and go to the next one. Uh, and this is passed in from our old state and new state from our event. So basically if the old state was in-game when we stop showing the in-game menu, if the old state was win, we stop showing the win menu. If the old state was lose, we stop showing the lose menu. Same thing again for to show it. So if we want to show the in-game menu, we add, to, add it to the viewport. Set the various mouse states to the appropriate state. Same for win, same for lose. So that should be relatively simple. Um, and then if we ever get destroyed, we unbind from that particular state change event by calling the unbind on the uh, game instance and hooking up the event to the event we want to unbind. So that's the in-game menu actor. Uh, going back to it. So the in-game menu actor, main menu actor is fairly similar. On begin play, we only create the main menu. We might have more menus here like we might have an options menu that we want to and we need to add a state for that as well but for now we've got we create the main menu widget we bind to the event again like we did in the other menu system um, that bind essentially does the same thing again it shows and hides the menu based on which state we're currently in and which one was the last state we're in so it shows and hides if it's just the main menu for now and then because it's after the bind event it comes in here and actually sets the state to main menu which will then cause this state to fire and show the main menu by adding the viewport to the widget that we created earlier and again if we get destroyed we unbind from that event and we remove the main menu from there viewport just to make sure so that's the main menu actor so basically you add a main menu actor into a main menu level and this will handle along with a game instance showing the main menu you then um, call game instance functions so um, if I just show you the game instance here we call a game instance method. So let's just go through what we've got in this game instance so you can see it a bit clearer. We've got a set state custom event that checks to see if the state that we're being told to move to is not the current state. And if it's not the current state, then we save the old state, set the new state, and then call that state change event, which is again an event dispatcher over here with the old state and the new state. It then handles, um, for itself, it handles whether this the new state is loading or whether it's going away from the loading state. And it does this loading state stuff because um, we create it over here in the event init for this game instance. It does the loading state handling because this is the only thing that's going to be available between level loads so we need to handle this loading again with a user widget variable in here that we create in the initialization function so when the in event in it happens we create the widget and store it in there and then for the game instance itself i mean you don't need to do this here you could do it in the menu itself um, you know the menu button clicked handle if you wanted to but I like it doing it here we have a, a custom event that says load game level it sets the state to loading 
so that the loading screen gets displayed. It does a little bit of a delay just to give that time to show and then it does open level and the open level obviously is the thing that loads the next level. So when I say load game level it's actually loading the sort of game level for the third person blueprint example that we were based it off and when uh, we choose a win or lose condition we're calling this custom game event which sets the state to loading again to transition between the two levels delays a little bit and then loads the main menu level back up or the main menu map in this case and then yeah so we're looking at the game instance class there what else is there there's the the various user interfaces so let's just go through those quickly uh we've got the game logic there we've got the in-game which just has a text it doesn't actually do anything because there's no logic for when you're in game now obviously you would put in your own version of the game stuff the loading menu again that does nothing it just displays uh, the lose menu has a button so when this lose menu gets displayed it essentially calls it uh, gets the game instance which is kind of global casts it and then calls back to main menu so that was that menu function we had a look at earlier um, the main menu itself has two button handlers so we've got the play game and the quick game play game gets the game instance called load game level so basically go into the game itself and then the second button just quits out of the application And then the final part is um, the win button. Again, this screen gets displayed from the in-game uh, menu actor. And again, it just calls the gate game instance and calls back to main menu on that. So we've gone through the actors. Uh, so the levels themselves just have uh, for the main menu level we have a main menu actor in it so you need to add one of those and then in our other level our actual gameplay level you need to make sure that you've added um, one of these in-game menu actors and you've seen that I've set up the triggers the triggers themselves um, call the level blueprint Let's go to blueprint, open level blueprint. And the triggers themselves literally just say set the state to lose to show the particular um the particular user interface for lose or win, which is again handled by the in-game menu actor. So it calls the the function on set state on the game instance which the menu actor is bound to. So the menu actor knows that that's changed and it will show the, the appropriate user interface. And then we just do a disable input on the guy who's, who's um, crossed the trigger, just so that we don't get some like strange movement while we're waiting for the level to change. Uh, and I think that is pretty much it. Again, if you've got any problems, obviously you can uh, leave a comment on the YouTube, you can send me an email, you can catch me on Twitter or whatever. Uh, it's been quite a long one, but it, you need this kind of um, setup for controlling the flow of gameplay. Um, if you're doing a C++ code and you kind of get lost with all the blueprintiness, you maybe want to check out Unreal Tournament's version of how they're doing their menus. You know, it's probably a little bit more complicated than this, but um, again, you know, you can catch me whenever, and I'll I'll try and help you out with what's missing. Uh, I did notice that there was a a little bug in the state change mechanism of four point seven point one, so um, it might be that you need to refresh the project if you get any problems one thing i would suggest doing is closing the editor down and restarting it just to make sure that the variables are refreshed and recompile it from there and see if that helps any okay i shall um, end it there and i'll see you in the next tutorial <laughs>